I've been trying to keep fit since the age of 16 in 2013, as back in my teenage years, the only thing I regularly lifted was whoever sat on the other end of the seesaw. This last year in particular, I've really pushed myself, but I, I've never really been someone who's felt compelled to force my progress pictures down the throats of my followers. It's just not true. I've thought long and hard about whether to make this video because I don't want it to come across in the wrong way. I thought I'd show some of my friends my before and after photos from this last year to see what they thought about it. Honestly, Chris, mate, it is so sick what you've achieved. Well done, pal. I remember when my abs looked like that. Then I turned nine. What are you doing? Hi, Chris. Transforming myself. Transforming. What are you... What, what are you transforming? Why don't you transform your content? Here, try this. Right now. Don't bleep my swear words. You, you game? Let's try it now. F uh, I'm a big fan, I've got to say, of the way you've you swapped the picture behind you so it looks like it's a di like a different period of time and that you haven't just breathed in. You know, I'm actually really proud of you, Chris. You've, you've put in a lot of work in the gym and you've come really far, but uh, it's a shame there's nothing you can do about this Halo 2 ghost nose. Oh, my name's Chris MD and I can gain money, muscle and subscribers. Pathetic. Congratulations, you've got some abs now. You're still... You're still five foot two though. You can't go gym for that. Mixed feedback. What made up my mind was thinking if when I first started trying to work on my body, back when the only thing I consistently worked out was whether I could count a chocolate orange as one of my five a day, it would have helped me massively. Today I want to show you what I've done this last year and share with anyone who's trying to work on their body and get in better shape everything I've learned so far. So first off, this was me back in 2013. I've never been fat, but I've always had that sprinkling of, as your mother tells you, puppy fat. But at some point it stops being puppy fat and you become just fat. Can we just talk about that tan, by the way? Who allowed that to go outside? With Instagram and the Love Island stuff this, these days, you know, that sort of image, there's just far too much pressure on your body. You should be happy whatever you look like. There's more to life than looking at yourself in the mirror nine times a day. But if you are someone who's trying to improve your body after you've taken that into account, this should hopefully help. So when I started out in 2013 doing actual workout stuff, I started at home because none of my close friends went to the gym. And no wonder my friends didn't want to be close to me with vests like that. After a while, I did start going to the gym and got into eating really healthily. So I was in quite good shape in 2016. The summer following that, I kind of lost it eating barbecues and uh, drinking in the summer. By August uh, 2017, I was looking like this. And at this point, I kind of looked at myself and was like, okay, next summer, I want to I wanna look good. So then and there, I said goodbye to the love of my life, breakfast pancakes. My girlfriend could see that after a year or so of exercise, I might actually be in her league. So luckily she stuck around. I started to get into it again, but then Christmas was heavy. <laughs> At the start of January, I looked like this. For the next 10 months, I then really pushed myself. I set myself a target of exercising for six days a week I'm like doing like a bit of exercise on each day and eating as healthily as I could with the exception of one day a week for eating whatever I liked and doing no exercise. I mainly stuck to it. Get in me. So I have three types of workout. Gym sessions, ab workouts and runs. I'd usually count football here but because of my injury. Have you been injured Chris? Oh you, you should have mentioned. On an average day if I'm doing a gym workout I'll get up as early as I possibly can. That way your brain hasn't had time to wake up and realise how horrific an idea going to the gym at 6 o'clock is. Now when you first go the gym is a scary place. The treadmill's the only thing that you really trust, and that's probably the thing you're most likely to get massively wrong out of all of it. Don't let it put you off. First bit of advice is to start going with a friend, or watch YouTube tutorials if you don't have any mates. <laughs> I could still probably find them for you in my history. When I first started off, I was always really worried about doing things wrong. Don't ever be worried about people laughing at you for doing an exercise slightly wrong. It's ridiculous. Those people are just the worst. If you're gonna laugh at something, then laugh at this guy's massive earlobes. <laughs> They're humongous. I do just wanna say I'm about as qualified to preach about fitness as I am about consistent uploading. I'm always trying to learn how to do things better and I'm not an expert, okay, and I don't think I'm one. Watch this like you would a road to shore pack opening. So don't take every everything in this video is fact. I used to go to the gym much less and for about an hour and a half and if you make it that long it just becomes so much bigger in your head. Nowadays I say 40 minutes and then I can stay longer than that if I want. And 
just like Meza Ozil playing at home, I turn up so much more often. On each exercise I do, I'll do three sets. There's so much rubbish out there from health sites and gym sites and stuff. So for all the stuff I do know about, I'll put all the relevant links in the description below for you to check out for yourselves. Something I found out recently that if you push yourself to failure on each exercise, it increases muscle hypertrophy, a term for the growth of the size of muscle cells, compared to stopping when, you know, you could do more reps. Come on, one more. but you've got to do it safely, okay? It's, it's a fine line. Which brings me on to my next point. Do bench press with a friend, always. Pushing yourself to failure on this is of course the most efficient way of building muscle. Right up until you fail. At which point you lie there for a couple of minutes deciding whether to keep your life and call for help or keep your pride and be quietly crushed to death. Now most gyms will usually have a guy who likes to think he's the alpha male of the territory. Usually wearing some sort of stringy vest that says I look at myself in the mirror during sex, you can find them by following the grunting sounds coming from the weights area. The volume of this depends on how they're taking the divorce. Quite often these are the people that just discard weights in midair. <laughs> If you're just kind of slinging weights down once you've lifted them up and you're halfway through the exercise, then you're literally not making the best use of your time, you know? You've got to, you're missing out on a few seconds of putting them down and working your muscle. Now this is another section I've read up on, so you can check all the links in the description below for relevant stuff here. But doing between 1 to 12 reps on an exercise is the most efficient to get your muscles bigger. Again though, you've got to be doing it to failure to be most efficient. On the scientific studies they've done on muscle hypertrophy, there's never been a big enough difference between 1 to 12 reps to conclude it makes any difference at all. Which is really interesting. If you're going to failure on any more than 12, though, then you begin to see a decrease in results. Now another thing, muscle definition is something I only found out about recently, but that's to do with how toned your muscles are. A common misconception about muscle definition and tone is you have to do more reps. It's actually about how long your muscles are contracting for. With more reps, you're just more likely to spend more time with your muscles contracted. More reps performed at a slower time is a good way of getting good muscle tone. Unfortunately, this means that in the last 10 minutes of your workout, you're gonna look like you've been on the senior yoga class weight for the whole thing, which you might have been. I appreciate every one of my 1.4% of subscribers aged 65 and plus out there. Unless you're driving the car in front of me. Is it even legal to drive that slow? Don't worry, we won't even need milk from the shops by the time we get there. We'll have starved to death. Finally for leg day, I usually mix it up with squats, leg press, calf raises, lunges, that sort of thing. Um, I would show you them today, but because my ankle I can't do any of them at the moment. Or I'm pretending I actually do leg day. You decide. Now, abs are like YouTubers. You can get about 15 minutes of work out of them each day before they've had enough. I'd actually been following like a timed ab workout on YouTube uh, since 2013. Yeah, probably when I first started, so four years. So you get like the 40 reps of uh, certain exercise and then you get 15 seconds rest time and it's like got different segments. Recovery. They started adding mid rolls into the timed workout. I know that's a little hypocritical, but you started having to halt your workout and sit through the same Grammarly ad, just like they see a YouTuber and assume you'd fail a year three spelling test. That was one time. So I went for the level one workout for ages. I've always just wanted to like just look at something and be like, okay, if I do that for like a year, that will definitely get me these abs, <laughs> you know? Since then, I've gone on to doing like exercises where I can do up to, you know, like more like 12 reps instead of 40, which had obviously increased muscle hypertrophy and everything like that. So um, yeah, I feel like I've got good results from moving up. <laughs> I'm incredibly lucky when it comes to where I live. Jersey has these like amazing coast paths to just go on runs on. And that is just great for clearing your mind, sort of forgetting any worries. At the end of the two miles, I've pretty much forgotten that we've probably got another year in the Europa League. Oh no. I find any kind of workout quite relaxing. I would really recommend it if you do have like a period where you're worrying about something. It's just. You can literally just go to the gym for an hour and come back and you feel because of endorphins, you feel so much better and you've just like given your mind an hour of rest, it's great.
So like gym sessions, what I do with runs is I go for 20 minutes or two miles. Uh, I use an app called Strava, they're not paying me. I used to go for like 40 minute runs, but they're just less fun than going for two 20 minute ones. They're just easier to take on. Also, if you do two 20 minute runs, your heart rate goes up and down twice. So it actually burns more calories than if you just did the 40 all in one go. I also found out recently that running compared to walking burns about three times more calories over the same distance. Diet is a Hello. diet is a constant internal battle. Imagine your Legolas and fast food and alcohol is that Urukai trying to slip under your defenses and destroy your rock hard abdominal Helm's Deep walls. I should probably lay off those films. Like I said, all week I try and eat as healthy as I can with the exception of one day where I just pig out. What that means is I give myself three cheat meals for the week. Well, it started like that anyway. I'd count a portion of chips as one cheat meal and a sticky toffee pudding as another. Then after a while each cheat meal became three courses, a beverage, bread for the table. I got carried away faster than when I asked Ronaldo what it was like being the second best player in the world. <laughs> Just being aware of how many calories certain things I eat have in them makes a huge difference alone. For example, as a teenager, I always used to try and start off my day right with a bowl of shreddies and some milk in the morning, followed by brushing my teeth, 10 minutes in the shower, another 10 minutes if I wanted to, doesn't matter what else I did. A helping of porridge has about 300 less calories than a helping of shreddies and like, I actually prefer porridge, so I was quite annoyed the day that I found that out. I've always liked sausages and chicken about the same, but sausages have generally like three or four times as many calories in. You just don't know unless you've looked it up, so that's half of it. Now, protein. You should have about 0.8 grams of protein for every kilogram of body weight you have. You should have a bit more if you're like actually doing exercise and trying to put on muscle, but I always have a protein shake when I uh, finish the gym at the end of a workout. Unless it's directly before a meal, otherwise it's just it's pointless, you might as well just have chicken. I guess maybe like half the time I have a protein shake. What, it's the weekend. Now in terms of dinner, eating a helping out of a bowl is a great idea as opposed to a plate. I used to always have dinner out of a plate and like you just end up subconsciously taking helpings that are just way too big for you. Plus if you finish that helping, it's like, okay, you want seconds? You're gonna have to get for at least one doorway to go get it fatty. Now you hear a lot of people these days telling you to avoid processed foods. Food companies tend to stick like things that make it taste nicer, but that tends to add unnecessary calories compared to if you cook it yourself. The problem is people generalize that term. Just because something's processed doesn't mean it's bad for you. Head over to our good friends on Facebook and they'll tell you to avoid them like, I don't know, they would vaccines. Now it's a sad day when you find out how many calories alcohol has in it. I'm not actually gonna tell you today. I don't wanna be that guy. But yeah, it's not great calorie wise, obviously in addition to it's other fun side effects. What's that one? Oh yeah, liver disease. Spirits are generally much better than beer. I'm not sure that is. Calorie wise anyway, and it's a good excuse when you're asked why you're drinking a delicious cocktail instead of a Foster's. Well, that's what a friend told me anyway. I generally go for JD's and Diet Coke, and while absolutely disgusting, soda water and vodka's even better. So I usually look for foods that are high on the satiety index. Like Morg's mum, they're really good at making you feel like you've had enough of something, but bolognese instead of breathing. Lastly, I have tea instead of food to try and fill me up and sort of keep me eating something whilst I'm editing, certainly. I find this a really good way of keeping full and not snacking, unless you have six cups of tea a day, which I used to. Nowadays I have four though, I have to <laughs> limit myself. Seven sugars in each. So that's my lifestyle and what I've been doing for the last year. Now you know that, and now we're past the 10 minute mark, it's probably time to show you my progress pictures. So this is four months in from January, um, doing well. My photography skills have gone the other way though. Background made up nicely by three public year idols. Another month on from that, we filmed the Van Persie header challenge in the summer. I remember checking the footage and being like, there's a few angles which might get some Tumblr edits here. It was a nice ego boost going through the comments on this one, I can tell you. Seriously though, what is your ad workout? Now you know. Right, uh, 30th of June, this was in the Lake District, the old, oh sorry, I didn't see you taking a photo there. This was one of the best days of my life. I remember, sorry, this is just turning into a diary, but this is me eating a scone in front of France, Argentina, you know, the 4-3. Another month on from that, uh, the World Cup was over. I'd been to Russia and back. Things here would have been 
very different with the amount of dark fruits consumed if England had been in the final. Then we recorded the video a month later with Ollie getting buried alive. I'd never looked anywhere near like this in my life, so yeah, I was very happy. Now finally, these are the last photos I took before Christmas, so 10 months on, a year and three months after I took this one in uh, 2017. Yeah, I was just so proud of how I looked. Like, just look at me, I'm like, oh, look at those abs, there's a video in there somewhere, surely. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That's hot. I've still got a lot of areas I want to improve. Legs, particularly, because I haven't been able to train them for like the last year because of my injury. I'm surprised my head could fit in that ring, to be honest. That was before Christmas, um, and you know, things always go downhill then. And then, because I had my ankle injury, I haven't been able to exercise really. But this was last week, so I've kind of limited the damage relatively okay. But yeah, I hope you can take something away from this, whoever you are. I'm gonna spend the next year with a little bit more emphasis on working on my mental health, because that is more important than any of this looking in the mirror. None of this means anything compared to if you're happy up here. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this insight into my life. Please subscribe if you are new around here. I would massively appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you later. Get out of here.